Hi, my name is J.R. Tallman, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to enter your opening AR within NetSuite. Now, there's a variety of ways to enter your opening AR when transitioning to NetSuite. However, the most common approach is using a single line item to represent the entire open AR account. This reduces the need to create detailed level transaction information that you had to reverse out and make it clean. So to show you this most common approach, what we're first going to do is to ensure that you have your customers loaded in NetSuite. Now, this is important, obviously, because we're going to be entering all of our invoices to represent our open AR. So just make sure you have your customers loaded as step number one. Next, we'll want to ensure that we have a clearing account set up. And this clearing account is going to be used for all of our transactions that go against this particular opening AR. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to List, Accounting, and Accounts. So I'm going to view my chart of accounts here. And what you'll notice is there should be an opening balance account that comes default within the system. Now, if there's not an opening balance account, you can go ahead and create that yourself. In this case, you can see that I have numbered this 3200 opening balance, and it is a type of equity. I'm going to keep this as equity as the type. That's okay. When we get to our items, we're going to make sure that this opening balance account is tagged to those items. Just make sure that you create an account called opening balance or whatever you want to name it. This will just be used as a clearing account. The next step is to ensure that we have allow override for our document numbers enabled so we can put the actual invoice number when we create our invoices in NetSuite. To make sure that this is set, what we're going to do is we're going to go to setup company and auto generated numbers. On the auto generated numbers page, you're going to go to the document numbers sublist here and ensure that invoices has this preference check that says allow override. Again, this is important to make sure that we put the proper invoice number when we create our invoices in NetSuite. The next step is important as we're going to use that opening balance account on our item, which we'll get to in just a second. To ensure that we can use that opening balance account, we're going to make sure that we can expand the accounting list when we get to our transactions. This can be found on any setup, accounting, and accounting preferences. Now, within the accounting preferences page, what you'll see is there is a preference that says expand account list. Make sure this is checked so we can use that opening balance account in the next step that we're just about to do. So check this box off and click on save, and then we'll be able to select that opening balance account on the item. All right, so let's get to create the item that we'll be using on our transactions. And to create a new item, this can be found underneath list, accounting, items, and new. And we're going to create a brand new item for our opening AR. Now, the most common would be to create a brand new item called non-inventory item for sale. If we're doing opening AP, we can create a new non-inventory item for purchase, or we can simply use an expense account. So in this particular tutorial, I'm going to go and click on for sale. And once we're on the non-inventory item for sale page, the first thing we're going to do is enter an item name and number. So this is required. So we're going to call this opening balance AR. You can give this whatever name you would like, but in my case, I'm just going to keep it called opening balance AR. And this is the item that we're going to be using for our open invoices. Nothing else is required in the top section here. However, I'm going to include my children for my subsidiaries to ensure that I can capture this on all my transactions that go into NetSuite. Then moving down to the accounting sub tab, this is important as this is the account that's going to be hitting when we go to our transactions. So this income account is not going to be a sales account. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and select the opening balance account that we just took a look at. There it is, the 3200. I'm going to go ahead and select opening balance. All right, once that income account has been set to be 3200 opening balance, the next thing I'm going to do and the last thing that's required, at least on my form right here, is to enter a tax schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and put this as exempt. Any tax information we can enter as line items and use the same account when we get to the transaction. If there are other fields that are required on your form, go ahead and fill those out. However, my instance, I have entered everything, key being the name, the parent subsidiary, and including children, making sure our income account is that clearing account, and then entering a tax schedule. Then I'm going to go ahead and simply click on save here. All right, once this has been saved, the next thing we're going to do is enter our invoices by customer using the same account for our open AR. Now, you can do this via bulk upload via CSV. However, in my tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and enter an invoice and show you how this looks and how it should be created via the user interface. So this can be found on any transaction, sales, and create invoices. And now that I'm on my invoice form, the first thing we're going to make sure is entering an invoice number that is a representative of the invoice that went out of your old system, assuming that you're transitioning to NetSuite. So go ahead and give this an invoice number that is real. So in my case, I put INV10234 here. And then the next thing you're going to enter is the customer. Make sure you have customers loaded in the system and go ahead and select that customer. 
All right, once that customer has been loaded, in my case, I'm just using a test AR customer. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put the date of the transaction to make sure your aging looks correct. So go ahead and enter this date of the transaction. So I'm gonna put this back on February 5th. Now, the posting period says uh, February 2025 here. Best practice that I like to do to make sure everything has been reversed out in the correct period is to reverse this out in the same period. So instead of putting this as February, I'm gonna keep this as April because that is what I'm working with right now. But again, your date will be the actual date of the invoice. However, my posting period is gonna be the posting period that I wanna reverse everything in once I get my invoices loaded. Note that if you can't have a date period mismatch here, you can certainly reverse every single period if you would like. So in this case, if it said February, you can reverse that with the journal entry, which you're gonna see in just a moment, then do March, April, et cetera. Now the due date is the next field here. This should be accurate and being populated to what your due date is, so your aging is correct. In my case, the terms are located underneath the billing, so if I go ahead and update this to be net 30, it should be accurately represented based on the date that I've entered of this invoice. A good practice is also put a memo here, which can be opening balance AR, so I'm gonna go ahead and put opening balance AR in the memo. And the reason for this is for any reporting that you need to see, you can easily identify that based on this memo for all the transactions. Now, the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to items, the sub tab here, and enter that item that we just created, which was our opening balance AR item. All right, once I select that opening balance AR item, feel free to give this des description if you do need a representation of the actual invoice, if you're gonna print this out. However, in this tutorial, we're assuming that we're not gonna reprint this out of the system and deliver it to the customer. We can use the old invoice that we sent out of our old system. So I'm not gonna enter a description and I'm gonna keep the price level as custom. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna enter a rate and amount, which would be the entire amount of this particular invoice that represents one line. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and put this as $4,520 and 22 cents. And then the tax code here will be 0%. All right. And then once you enter that full line, you can go and simply click on add total updates up here, and that should look correct. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply save this invoice. All right. Once this has been saved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to underneath actions and GL impact and show you the GL impact of this particular transaction. Now, this particular transaction, the debit is going to be our AR account, which is set up by default by our system preference. That's okay. That's my 1100 account. And then my credit is using that opening balance account based on that item. And everything is hitting the April posting period in my example. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to reverse this out because your particular opening AR is going to come in through your trial balance month over month. Your actual AR will be coming in via your trial balance. So we need to reverse this out to make sure there's no GL impact, but to ensure that the trial balance comes in and is accurately reflected of your AR. Before we reverse this out, what we would want to do is once you get all this imported into the system is go to reports customers and receivables, and then go to the AR aging report. And once on the AR aging summary report, this will show us our customers, right? So you should see all your customers once you get those imported, whether they're via the user interface or through a CSV import. And this total opening balance should match what is in your AR that you're gonna be bringing in via your trial balance at your latest trial balance entry. Okay, so as of 4-17-2025, my open balance is 4,005, 2022. And this should match what my accounts receivable is on my balance sheet. So if I go to my balance sheet, you can see this is as of April, 2025 my AR account up here is matching that AR aging report. All right, now we're gonna to need to reverse this out because again, I keep mentioning that we're gonna be bringing in that AR account via our trial balance. And when we reverse this out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're hitting a dummy customer to make sure that the AR aging is correct. Before we actually go to our journal entry to reverse this out, we're gonna to go to list relationships, customers, and new. Now, on the customer page itself, you can give this a name. I'm going to call this dummy AR reversal. All right, so dummy AR reversal. This is key. And then making sure that the, the subsidiary is correct. So I'm going to give it my subsidiary. And I'm simply just going to save this. Now, once this customer has been saved, our next item on the agenda here is going to be to create a reversal journal entry based on that amount from your balance sheet and AR aging. This can be found on any transactions, financial, make journal entries. Now on this journal entry, I'm gonna go and give it a subsidiary. So I'll go ahead and select my subsidiary. 
In my example, this is in CAD, so that's fine. I'm going to keep it as CAD. If you're USD or any other base currency, you can keep that notated here, so that's fine. The date, uh, I'm going to keep today's date that you can see on the screen, and then the posting period. This is key why we want to make sure that everything for our invoices are in the same posting period, because we're going to simply do a full reversal of this in the same posting period. So I'm going to keep this as April 2025, and then my memo here, I'm going to call this AR reversal. Excellent. Now, moving down to the lines, the debit here is going to be to our opening balance account. So if I switch back to that invoice and the GL impact, our credit was to an opening balance. So our debit is just going to be a simply a reversal of this amount. So if I go back to this journal entry, I'm going to go ahead and select that opening balance account. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter that amount for my debit. Feel free to put a memo if you would like here. Same thing with the department, class, and location if you are using segmentations on your invoices. I put no segmentation on my invoices, but the reversal would be strictly to those same department, class, and locations if you do have any of those mandatory. Once that's entered, our credit is going to be against the AR account. So if I go back to that GL impact, our AR account is my 1,100 accounts receivable. And if I go back to this journal entry, I'm going to go ahead and enter that 1,100 accounts receivable. All right, and the credit will be the same amount. Feel free to put a memo if you'd like at the line here. Now the key on this particular side is to enter a name, which is gonna be our dummy AR reversal customer that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that dummy AR reversal customer. Go ahead and select that as the name. Again, enter a department class and location if required to reverse that out, simply add that line. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then remember this amount would be for the full amount of your aging and simply hitting that dummy AR reversal customer. Now, if I go back to my aging underneath reports, customers and receivables, AR aging, what you're going to see here is I have a reversal and it has $0. However, we want to make sure that this is getting rid of on the dummy AR reversal, which we're going to show you in just a moment. All we should be seeing is our actual AR customers from this view. So once we're on the AR aging summary report, as you can see here, I see both customers, my test AR customer, which is correct with the correct balance. Then I see this first line, which right now is not correct, which you're going to see in just a moment on how we get this out of the system. So the next thing that you'll do is you'll be entering your trial balances month over month. And when I get to my April trial balance, I will be entering that as a journal entry. So if I go ahead and enter my trial balance for my April entry, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter this as an April entry. What we're gonna do, we're gonna assume this is my trial balance. I'm gonna go ahead and debit my AR account because that's how it will be coming in with my trial balance. In my example, I'm gonna put the entire amount for my debit. And now on this particular row, when you enter your trial balance, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you give it a name for that dummy AR reversal customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it that name. This is very important. And then you'll enter your trial balance with both the debits and credits and my uh, other side of the entry, I'm just gonna simply hit income account for the total amount. So this would be my, my trial balance, my full trial balance in this case for April. All right, once that's entered, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. The last thing what we're gonna do is to make sure that we clear this journal entry out with my AR dummy reversal customer to what I have in my AR aging from that journal entry. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and accept a payment. So under transactions, customers accept customer payments. We're gonna go ahead and use our dummy customer up here. This is gonna have no GL impact, but what we're gonna be doing is down below, you can see my journal entry right here in my invoices, and then I should have that same effect underneath my credits underneath that journal. All right, so the credit is gonna clear out our invoice from our reversal journal entry. So we have two journal entries, one being the trial balance and one being the reversal entry that we did from our total AR aging. Right, so you can see the applied is the entire amount, and I can simply go ahead and click on save here. Again, this will have no GL impact. We're just simply applying the two journal entries against each other's to that reversal customer. All right, once that has been saved, our last thing what we can do is go to reports, customers and receivables, and our AR aging. And on the AR aging, we should simply just have our customers, which look exactly and perfect here, right? This is the total amount that we initially entered for our invoices. And if we go to our balance sheet underneath reports, financial and balance sheet, and once on the balance sheet, you can see my accounts receivable is that $4,520.
So we are golden. So what this does, and a lot of times I see other consultants, they don't do it this last approach where we create a dummy customer and apply it to that trial balance. If we do not do that, what's going to happen is underneath reports, customers, and AR aging, you're going to see a no customer entity line, which is not good. So to make sure your AR aging summary looks golden, just like you're seeing on the screen here with no, no customer slash entity, make sure you put it to a dummy customer on that reversal journal entry and apply it against the trial balance dummy no customer. This concludes on how to enter opening AR balances within NetSuite. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe and comment if you have any questions. Thank you.